In order to understand why that diode is necessary in the circuit for the radio receiver, let's first take a look at how the circuit misbehaves when the diode is not there. Let's assume that we've got a radio transmitter that's very close to the receiver. So we have a pretty strong signal coming into that wire. Now ideally, if we weren't having a spark gap transmitter, a radio station would have a carrier wave that's just a pure sine wave. And the frequency of that sine wave would nominally be controlled by some resonance of an inductor and a capacitor. Now the frequency of that resonance, or the frequency of the radio transmission, is typically around 1 megahertz. And as you might recall, the AM spectrum is generally from about 500 kilohertz up to about 1.6 megahertz or so. So 1 megahertz is somewhere right in the middle of the AM radio band. That's not what we're getting from the spark gap transmitter. From the spark gap transmitter, we're getting a modulated radio wave. And the frequency is still nominally 1 megahertz, but it's amplitude modulated. That is, as the tank circuit decays and power exits the transmitter through the antenna, then the sine wave starts to trail off exponentially, as you can see in the diagram. The frequency that you would nominally hear in the headphones would be the sparking frequency. So that's what we want. Now what do we have if the diode is not in the circuit? That is, if the diode is missing, what voltage do we have near the headphones? Well, the radio wave represents a traveling electric field. That is, the field is oriented upwards, and then the field is oriented downwards, forcing the electrons in the antenna to move up and down at the radio transmission frequency. That is, it's trying to get the electrons to move up, and it's trying to get the electrons to move down. In this circuit, that's exactly what happens, because the headphones represent more or less a resistor. So the electrons are moving up and down at the frequency of transmission, but I can guarantee it that the diaphragm in these headphones cannot move in and out at a megahertz. Mechanically, it's just not possible. These headphones function almost like a low-pass filter. The diaphragm tries to move in and out at a megahertz, or it tries to move out at a million times per second, but mechanically it can't. So it sees a moving average of the signal. And if we look at the signal and I ask you, what is the average voltage of that signal? What is the time average voltage of the signal? The answer is zero. It's a flat line. So a flat line at zero is what the headphone sees. The diaphragm doesn't move at all, and you can't hear anything out of the headphones. So that's why the receiver doesn't work when you don't have the diode there. So let's take a look at what happens to the receiver if I have a diode. The electric field strength just outside the antenna is the same as it was before. It tries to pull the electrons up, and then it tries to push the electrons down. And that's what happens at the antenna, but the voltage can never be negative because as soon as the voltage tries to go low, current moves up from the ground immediately to balance the charge. In other words, the diode becomes forward biased the moment that the voltage tries to go negative. So the signal in terms of the voltage across the headphones now doesn't exactly mirror the electric field just outside the antenna, as you can see in the plot of the voltage versus time. The diode just takes off the bottom part of the circuit, and if you're familiar with diodes, you've probably seen this behavior before. Now the headphones will see a moving average, and if I ask the same question again, what is the time averaged voltage, or what is the moving average of the voltage? And it's something like this black line that you're seeing now plotted, superimposed over the signal. That is, the average voltage kind of goes up in a sawtooth manner, and then it trails back down. It goes up in a sawtooth manner, and it trails back down. There's a DC offset. In other words, current on average will go up through the diode and then back down through the headphones. And the frequency of that sawtooth wave is roughly the sparking frequency. This circuit works. If we put the headphones on and we have a spark gap transmitter transmitting nearby, then we're going to hear something like a sawtooth wave at the sparking frequency. What happens if we turn the diode in the other direction? Well, if the diode has the opposite polarity, then the circuit is still going to work. It's just that the top half of the signal is going to be missing. The voltage can never be positive because if the voltage tries to go positive, current will just simply flow down through the diode. So if the circuit is arranged like this, on average, current will move down through the diode and it will move back up through the headphones. The headphones will see the moving average of the signal and the diaphragm will move back and forth at the sparking frequency. What happens if we use a germanium diode rather than an ideal diode? A germanium diode has a turn-on voltage of about 0.3 volts. As you can see in this diagram, 
the ideal diode turns on at zero volts. Anything higher than zero volts, it's on. The germanium diode needs a little bit more voltage to get it to turn on. This means that the moving average is going to be slightly closer to zero than it was in the case of the ideal diode. The germanium diode is a little bit more difficult to turn on than the ideal diode was. In other words, it's not as good. If we then move to a silicon diode, we can see that 0.7 volts is necessary to get the silicon diode to turn on. That's worse still. And it starts to approach the situation where we have no diode at all. In other words, the more difficult it is to turn on a diode, that is, the more voltage you need in order to get the diode to start conducting electricity, the closer the circuit resembles a circuit with no diode at all. And we already know that that circuit doesn't work. Therefore, the best situation is if you have a diode with a low turn on voltage. And that's exactly why a germanium diode is better than a silicon diode in this situation.